ship. This is what we want. We now can see Emma, and we can see um, Emma screen, and we are in business. And I'm not going to touch anything else. <laughs> All right, so I'm like hands up for the rest of the podcast. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we so Emma, we did a, a stream like way back in the day where you worked on SB images, right? Yes, we did. Okay, excellent. And so um, this time around, you wanted to learn how to build a theme. I do. They sound really cool, except I have no idea how to work with them. Okay, perfect. Um, what was your idea for, like, what theme did you want to build? I really want to build a theme for a style guide that can be used when you're building a design system. Very cool. Okay, um, so I guess the, the way that we would start, it looks like you've got an empty folder going here. Um, I actually, so do, not even a theme? folder. Let's, uh, let's, let's create one real quick. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh, don't make fun of me and my keyboard shortcuts. I need to learn them. Um, let's do Gats. No, neither. Oh, God. I was getting made fun of at work, but, you know, it's fine. All right, new folder. Okay, so we have a new folder. And we're going to do um, yarn workspaces for this. So do you have yarn installed? I do. Okay, perfect. So um, the first thing that you'll want to do is create a uh, package.json in this root folder. Okay. Well, should I do it manually? Does it make a difference? Uh, I would do this one manually because it's so different from a standard, right. um, like a standard one. Okay. And so inside of it, you're just going to set um, private to true. So it's like an object. Is it um, a string or is it a, a okay. these so are the all key strings. has to be a string. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, true is unquoted. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do workspaces as your next key. Okay. And this one takes an array. Okay. And um, we're going to choose folders. So, like, typically speaking, what I do is I set one called theme and I set one called demo. Okay. Um, and so the, the demo is the site that will consume the theme so that we can show how it works. And the theme will be the, the theme package itself. So um, you'll just add both of those as uh, strings in the array. Do I need um, the current, like, the dot slash or? Nope, it should okay. just work. Demo. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> Brando Kirkland is like, I, my inner help desk is screaming right now. I, yeah, all I <laughs> want to do is like reschedule this and fix it, but I, I, I think we got to push through. Um, so what we've done here is we basically said, Hey, Yarn, we want you to, um, use the folders in this, uh, in, or use these subfolders, theme and demo as individual workspaces. So they'll behave as if they were separate NPM packages. So what we can do is when we install one from the other, Yarn knows to use the local version so we don't have to like publish NPM packages to see how it works when we install it somewhere else. Um, so next we'll create two directories. You can, you can save that, you're, you're all set. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna create a theme folder and a demo folder. Okay. Okay, and then let's start with the theme folder. You can do um, like a Yarn init dash Y in this one if you want. Mm. Okay, and so if you take a look in here, what this is going to give us is um, a pretty like straightforward theme directory. So for development, we can keep that name, but what we'll want to do when we go to publish is we need to add um, a real theme name. So you want to do like Gatsby-theme- in your case, probably like design system or something. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll also need to add some keywords and your author information. Um, we can do that now okay. if you want. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's do that. Style guide. Uh, it was author. Oops. And then what was it? Keywords? Yeah, keywords is going to be um, an array, and you'll want to put in Gatsby. Mm -hmm. uh, Gatsby dash plugin. Mm -hmm. and Gatsby-theme, and that'll get picked up in our site show or our plugin showcase so that people can search it and index it. 
Um, that should be everything we need. And then you see how the main is set to index.js? Yep. Uh, that means we just need to create an index.js. And I usually just put a little like no offer. I, I for whatever reason, picked up just putting a comment that says boop mm -hmm. in there. Um, you can put whatever you want, but uh, yeah, perfect. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now this is uh, this is officially a theme. Like we could install this somewhere if we wanted to. Um, That's awesome. Don't do anything at the moment, but it it functions. Um, so what we will want to do to kind of start off is um, let's kind of install the, the peer dependencies and stuff for, for Gatsby. So in your terminal, you can run um, yarn workspace. Um, do I do this in the root? It actually doesn't matter. That's what's nice about yarn workspace. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to put in the name of the theme. So Gatsby theme design system, I think you called it. A style guide, right? And then you can do add. Okay, let me just make sure. I think it was style guide. Oh, I don't know where you went. Yeah, style guide. And okay. then, sorry, okay, what? Cool. Add. And then we're going to set these as peer dependencies. So dash capital P. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to use Gatsby, React, and React DOM as uh, peer dependencies. Okay, like this? Yes. And so you can hit enter, that'll install them. And we'll see these pop into the packets.json once they finish installing. Cool. I need like a sound bank that I can play uh, like the Jeopardy music while we wait for another right? to install. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh, this takes so long. <laughs> uh, I know. It, so the rest of them should hopefully go faster because I think we're getting the the bulk of someone the someone says that you I, need to do the musical entertainment. I, I, <laughs> I <laughs> all right, next next node modules break. I will definitely do it. Um, <laughs> okay, so we have uh, everything is installed now. We've got the, the peer dependency set up, Gatsby React, React DOM. Um, and we can set up a um, like if we need to a Gatsby config or a uh, you know a Gatsby node, whatever we want to do. Um, so let's start, I guess, by doing a Gatsby node. Okay. Um, so you'll in the theme you'll create a new file called uh, Gatsby-node.js. Okay. And this lets us do various Gatsby API things. Um, okay. And to just kind of show that it's working, what we can do is uh, let's do exports dot create pages, and that, that's going to be a, a multiple or a plural export. Uh, what do you mean? Like e export with an S. Oh, whoops. Okay, and, and then this is um, this is a variable, so we're we're going to put it to equal um, a function. And I usually use arrow functions because they're a little easier. Um, and for this particular thing, all I actually think we should do is just like console log something to make sure that our theme is installed. Sure. Um, so we can just console log whatever you want. <laughs> okay, great. And then in our demo, we're going to install this theme so that we can test that it's working. Okay. Um, so, so in here, you can do the same thing, yarn in it dash y. Uh, demo yarn in it dash y. Mm -hmm. And then in this one, we need to install Gatsby, React, and React DOM, but uh, as like regular dependencies, so without the dash p. Uh, Gatsby, React. Uh, make, well, you want to use uh, the yarn workspaces. So yarn workspace oh, demo. Uh, demo, and then. Add Gatsby React React DOM. Um, oh, add Gatsby mm -hmm. React React DOM. Okay. 
Is that a saxophone? I don't know what that was. I, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that uh, okay. was pretty so... contemporary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so now what uh, what Yarn Workspaces will do, and, and it looks like you're already noticing this, is that it's um, if the node modules is basically empty in the package itself. Yeah. But we can see at the root, there's a, a node modules um, folder, and that's got the dependencies for both demo and theme. Um, mm. And so that's like while we're while we're working, we can we can kind of keep everything in one place. It, it makes it makes development a lot more convenient when you're dealing with multiple packages. Um, okay. And so what we want to do now that we have our demo set up is we're going to install the theme. And yep. what we should be able to do is we should be able to do yarn workspace demo add. And then Gatsby theme style guide. Okay. Um, and because it's not published, like this. Yeah. Yeah, but then do at star, and that's for um, because it's not published yet. We want to make sure that we get what uh, without a space. So oh, we're basically like... telling it the version can be like any version. Okay. And it's magical. Okay. <laughs> um, so now if you do, uh, you can check that this is reading from the local file. You can do yarn workspaces, uh, plural, info. Mm -hmm. Wor worse spaces, workspaces. <laughs> <laughs> it's, eight, it's 8.30 here. I'm a little loopy. Uh, yarn workspaces, what was it? Info. Ooh. You'll have to make your terminal a little bit bigger, but we can see that. Um, I mean, I don't have using... to. I should. <laughs> <laughs> um, but right. we can see here in the in the demo that the workspace dependencies it shows Gatsby theme style guide, and so yeah. that's our confirmation that it's loading from the local file. So it's using that local okay. package instead of the remote one. Mm -hmm. um, now that this is done, we can actually run the demo. Uh, and the way that we'll want to do that is in the demo, we need to create a, um, a script in the package.json. Yep. Okay. And, yep. And we'll call it uh, develop. Mm -hmm. And the value will just be get to develop. Mm -hmm. Should we try it out? So now you... Yeah, Yarn Workspace Demo Develop. And what should happen is we'll get kind of the standard Gatsby output, but we should see our console log get picked up. Mm. Did we miss it? Uh-oh. Uh, wait, hold on. Um, it should have showed up in the, the console there. Yeah, so no, maybe... nothing's going on here. Um... Oh dear. Oh so no. <laughs> we missed the step. What step did we miss? Let's um see, so that's all running. It's doing what we want. So we want it to run the the gets. Oh, oh, uh, uh, we forgot to actually like use the theme. So we need to create a gets we can fig in the demo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and in here, we're going to do module.exports. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we did start from scratch um, in the, the chat. So no 404 pages is, is not an issue. That's something that, like, we, we encourage you to create one because if somebody hits a, a URL that doesn't exist, but, like, during development, it's not going to be a problem. We'll just show you the, um, the pages that do exist, and in this case, none exist yet. So um, what we'll do with the Gatsby config here is we're going to add a plugins array. So um, the key is plugins. OK, and this this is a very, like it's an object, right? I always forget these. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a, so it's an object, and then the, the um, plugins will be the, the key. And since this one's JavaScript, you don't have to quote them, but you totally can. Oh, um, shoot. No, I don't want to. 
Okay, and then um, what you can do here is uh, do we, do you and that we're probably going to end up passing options to this theme at some point, right? Yep. Okay, so let's declare it as an object. So um, okay. we can just set. Well, you still need the array, but there will be an object in the array. Yes. Okay, and so we'll resolve to Gatsby theme style guide. Gatsby. Ga <laughs> Gatsby theme the, style uh, guide. Oh my gosh. Kimberly is, loves the Gatsby as like a typo Ga of Gatsby. Gatsby. And I, she, <laughs> I think she's got some big plans for, for Gatsby as like a, a mascot. <laughs> I think I think you should buy the um, domain and make it like just just off enough to be funny. <laughs> um, <sighs> note note to Amberly. Um, she, she, cool. she, she so in, and you already added an, an empty uh, empty object. So yeah. for options, we're we're not going to set any yet, but we will be able to set them. So for now, you can okay. just save this. Mm -hmm. And now, if you uh, stop and restart using the Gatsby theme develop, now we should see that console up because we've actually installed the theme. There Moment of truth, Jason. Where are you at? Uh, oh. It's going to be up <laughs> right, yeah, right there. There we go. So, it works. Um, <laughs> so now we've got our theme running. Um, and that means that we can do all sorts of stuff with it. So the, the fun thing about this is that anything that you can do with a Gatsby site, you can do in a Gatsby theme. Um, and the thing that's really interesting about this is that you can kind of run that Gatsby config as a function. So to test that, let's add an option, and it can be anything, just any key value that you want. Hmm. I thought for a second you were going to put false in, and I was like, boy, that's a, that's a gutsy move. Do you move. know me at all? <laughs> no, I know. I've seen your test hammock, but I was like. <laughs> okay. Um, so now, if you go back into the Gatsby node of the theme. Okay. Uh, my keyboard shortcuts don't work anymore. Okay. <laughs> um, so where we've got this, uh, this create pages, there yeah. is a first argument that is like our utilities or, you know, what, like whatever you want to call it. So we can skip that argument. You can just use like an underscore to, to stub it out for now. And then the second one is options. And okay. so if, if you want to, um, you can then read in those options and you'll get cats are cool. Can I destructure this? Yeah, for sure. And then, um, yeah, you can just like relog and show that output. You have something else to save your desk. You can save as well, because you're- Oh, did I not? It. Okay. And then if we head back up there, it looks like it logged. Woohoo! Cats are cool, true. So yeah, now we can pass configuration in. And this is powerful for like the base case that we see is that people use this to um, like set the where the content comes from or like where the the path will be. So you know, by default, maybe it, it builds uh, index. So you know, your site.com slash um, and that's where the theme will build. But if you were gonna put multiple themes together, maybe you want to have this run at slash style guide. And so you'd be able to pass in an option here to do slash style guide. Um, mm -hmm. So we can deal with that a little bit later. Um, when you talk about doing a, a style guide, what, like, where do you envision the data coming from? This is a really great question. Um, so I thought a lot about this, and I think that it would be best to do these as markdown files, like MDX, I think is probably the best type of thing, right? So the biggest thing about style guides is that they have embedded code snippets. And that's where I'm struggling with our style guide okay. is how do we get these these snippets? Yeah. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I think that totally makes sense. So let's do that by configuring MDX. Um, and the way that we can do that, I'm gonna pull up my notes so that I don't 
say anything stupid here. Um, yes, we're going to install Gatsby plugin MDX. So you can do yarn, um, yarn workspace, Gatsby theme style guide, and then you're going to add Gatsby MDX, and we or Gatsby plugin MDX, sorry. And let me find actual docs here to make sure that I've got this right. Um, you're also going to install. Oh crap! Hold oh, please. Uh, we're going to just do the plugin. So what I'm looking up right now is the uh, the README for Gatsby plugin MDX. Mm -hmm. And I will post that in the chat so that everyone has that link. Um, and what we're going to do here is install Gatsby plugin MDX. And then also we need um, at MDX dash JS slash MDX. Like this? Yep. And uh, I'm actually looking at this, and I think this is the wrong thing because it looks like they haven't updated the uh, the docs on this particular one yet because we pushed a major version of um, of the MDX plugin. So give me just one second. I'm going to look at the source code to make sure that I'm not giving you bad instructions here. Um, mm -hmm. I am, let's see, Gatsby plugin MDX is in here somewhere. Uh, boy, those are, those seem like incorrect instructions. Okay, so, yeah, all right, let's just, let's just roll ahead here. So what we're going to do is we're going to install um, the mdxjs slash mdx. We're also going to install mdx-js slash react. Is that, that's also an and. Uh, at, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's um, and it looks like you got an, a max instead of an MDX there. <laughs> for the. Yeah. Okay. So this, once you install this, should work. Um, I'm trying to figure out what happened to the the up to date instructions here. Um, let's see. Uh, the question about running on a Mac. Um, the the things that are happening on here, I think that they will work on Windows. Uh, the major issue that we've seen is like when you use the app star, if you're using like Z, ZSH or whatever, Z shell, whatever, however you pronounce that, you have to quote it and that might be true on Windows as well. Um, so that's the, that's the major thing that we've run into so far. Um, so, all right, you've installed those. Let's go ahead and get them installed. We're going to do that in the theme itself. So in the, the theme, we need to create a Gatsby config. Okay. And inside of that, we are going to do a module.exports. And this is going to um, have a plugins option. Mm -hmm. And it'll take an object, or yeah, it's an array, and then that first object is going to resolve to Gatsby plugin MDX. Mm -hmm. And we don't need any options now, so let's just pass it an empty object. Okay. Okay, and so we can save that. And then we're also going to need to install Gatsby source file system so that we can get to those MDX files. So let's, um, let's do, yep. Same thing here, right? Just with source file system. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this and is so, not options. It's like, what is it, entry or well, it, it starts with options. Um, and okay. then we're inside the options. We're going to give it a path. And 
for this one, we actually, like, this is something we probably want to be configurable because we want people to be able to choose what folder their, their components live in. So they can mm -hmm. call it like style guide or docs or whatever they want. So um, let's go up to the module.exports and mm -hmm. we're going to turn this into a function. So, okay. um, yep, and then you can wrap that whole output if you want. So, like, you can just wrap it all in a, um, like, from line one all the way down to the bottom, you can just wrap the whole thing in, in parentheses and that'll be an implicit return. Okay. Wait, um, from line two? Line two? Well, the, so the opening curly brace on line one. Oh, that, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that'll give you an implicit return. And then um, the argument will be options. And so anything that gets passed into the config or the options for the, um, the theme will be readable here. So we can do options dot, and then the, um, the convention that we have is content path, camel case. Mm -hmm. And then you can just do an or and set a default. And oh, okay. You, yeah, whatever, whatever folder you want to read by default. Uh, we'll just do docs, I guess. Uh, does this need to be a string that like this? Yes. Yeah, it's a it's a string. Okay. So that means that it's going to, um, by default, look for a folder called docs, and we have two options here. So like option one is we just put it in the docs that you have to create that folder, like whatever folder it's going to be. Option two is we can use Node to check that the folder exists and create it if it doesn't. Um, do you have a preference one way or the other? Mm, no, I don't. Okay. So the, I mean, it's probably easiest to just create it because otherwise the, the risk is that people would get an error if they don't read that yeah. doc. Um, okay. So we, we can save this, go into our Gatsby node. Mm -hmm. And um, up at the top, we're going to use the uh, FS. Um, yeah, uh, const fs equals require fs. And that's a node built in, so we don't have to install it or anything. Um, and we will, we will need, um, I don't know how people actually pronounce this, but I heard somebody say make derp, and it made me really, sm it made me smile. Um, so we need the, the make derp uh, dependency, so mkdirp. Oh, make derp. The, and the P is for um, recursive. So like if you want to create three like, nested folders, you don't have to create them one at a time. Um, and this one we do have to install. So we'll have to add that to the theme uh, as a dependency. Oh, wait a sec. Hold on. We were adding these to the demo folder. Crap. Oh, no. No, no, no. Uh, you, you did it to the right one. You added it to okay. the, the style guide. Yeah, check okay. the package JSON. Let's double check. Okay, yeah, we're good. Sorry. <laughs> okay, great, very good. Um, yeah, so here we're going to add uh, to the to the theme. We're going to add uh, make make there. Like that. Is that good? That's the one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> make there, but it sounds like something from like a McDonald's special, like. <laughs> <laughs> a McDerp? Oh no, that's yeah. even worse. <laughs> oh god. Okay, so yeah, now that we've got that, we can um, we can pull that in. And what we're going to do is let me I'm gonna pull this out a little bit. Um, that's the wrong thing. I want this one. Um, yeah, so we are going to uh, export a new uh, API hook. We're going to use on pre bootstrap. So exports dot on pre bootstrap. And that's camel case. Um, this one also takes a function. Mm -hmm. And we're going to um, We're going to pull out the uh, the store from the first object, so just the structure for store. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about why we're using that here in a second. Um, and then the second argument is going to be our theme option, so we can call that options. Okay. Uh, th that's actually after the destructured. Oh shoot. 
Yep. Uh, what does um, this one do again? So, what does is, what is this exports do? So on free bootstrap runs before Gatsby starts doing anything. So it's kind of like um, if you ever set up like a pre-install hook in, in NPM scripts or something, it's mm. similar to that. In the, so basically what we're going to do here is we're going to say, hey, Gatsby, before you run, check if the, the uh, content directory exists, and if not, create that folder. So that'll avoid a, a file system error where it's like that, you know, I'm trying to read from a folder that doesn't exist. So check if there's a content directory and use that, otherwise create one. Mm -hmm. okay. well, it, it won't actually use it, it's just gonna make sure that it exists so that uh, the file system plugin doesn't fail if it doesn't. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So um, with that, we are able to then move into uh, the actual on pre bootstrap function, which we will pull out the, the program from store. So um, this is going to be destructured. You're going to do const um, and then destructure program. And you're going to get this out of store.get state. And so what we're doing here is we're going into Gatsby's internals to figure out where the uh, where we're running. Um, so this is to kind of figure out like, okay, so we're at uh, the, you know, like user slash Emma slash dev, whatever kind of folder. Um, this is how like, we can get that out of Gatsby so that when we create the folder, we create it in the right place. Um, so then we can say that our, um, our content path is going to be uh, either the theme options dot content path or our default, which would be, I think you said the docs. Yep. So we can set that one up. What was this? It was um, content? Content path. Content path. Options mm -hmm. dot, what was it? Options dot content path uh, or? Yeah. And I think you said or docs. Do I need to add that sp specifically? Because isn't this defaulting if it's not there? Well, it's um, what's defaulting now is uh, in the Gatsby config, I think it was. Oh, OK. And so this, yeah, this is where things get a little bit confusing. Um, you can get rid of that trailing slash if you want to. OK. Um, and then what we're going to do next is we're going to on line 15, we'll, we'll jump into that function again. And we're going to say, um, or right below that, I guess, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll say if uh, we're going to use fs.existsync to check the, um, the base path. Mm -hmm. Is that a, and do I have to? Yeah. Yeah, like and so we'll do. Yeah, but we want to add the um, the program dot directory, and so okay. I guess we would need to use. Let's see. Um, let's get path as well. So we'll uh, by fs we'll include path because we want to make sure that this works on Windows. So we're going to do like a path dot join instead of manually concatenating. Um, do I, is that a separate const from a different package or is it, this? Yep. Yep. Path is a built-in. So we'll just, uh, require path and yeah, so FS is short for file system. So basically what we're saying is if in the file system, this thing exists and we're using sync so that we don't have to do promises and, and that kind of stuff. Um, then we're going to do, uh, I guess let's do, uh, before the if statement, let's create like a, a variable to hold the directory. So we can do const um, dir, mm -hmm. and we'll make it path.join, and we'll use program.directory, and this is the, the information we're getting out of Gatsby. And mm -hmm. the second argument will be our content path. Okay. Um, so now we can say if the directory does not exist, so we'll, we'll use a bang to negate that. Okay. Um, 
if it doesn't, then we're going to make dirt. We'll, we'll do the make dirt uh, dot sync <laughs> and pass in that directory. Okay. And we can actually test this now. Uh, if you want to save it, you can um, check the the. We can just run the demo basically, and what should happen is it should create that directory for us. Okay. Um, how do I run the demo again? Uh, Yarn workspace demo develop. Yarn workspace Gatsby develop. Cool. Uh, de demo not Gatsby. Oops. <laughs> Oh, we uh, we typoed on line seventeen. It's uh, path, not task. I think I might have mumbled. Oops. Okay. Uh oh, all broke. Uh, maybe we we have another typo. Um. What is the problem? Like? Gatsby source file system result. Oh. Where are you at? There's config. This. Ah. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. So someone mentioned Storybook okay. in the chat, and just FYI, um, Storybook is great for documenting component React components, um, but style guides are actually different. They also contain branding, accessibility, color information as well. So while Storybook is great for documenting React components, um, style guides are much more than that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, OK, so now that you've run this, if you look in your demo folder, that mm -hmm. docs folder was created. So ta-da, we did it. Um, so next, what we want to do is we actually want to like read these uh, these files. So let's go ahead and create our first MDX file, actually. OK. And this is going to be just like any other markdown file. You'll just call, name it .mdx, um, okay. probably for, I guess you could call it like index. Uh, well, how do we, whatever. Name it whatever you want. I'll call it accessibility.mdx, because everyone awesome. should know how to incorporate accessibility. Absolutely. Um, and so to start, yeah. So and do you want to quickly yeah, explain what MDX is uh, for people who aren't aware? Yeah, that is a good call. So MDX is an extension of Markdown. And it, it effectively allows you to run any React component in your mm -hmm. Markdown. So what we'll be able to do here is once we get this up and running is um, Emma will be able to import a React component into this MDX file, and it will render as React code. So you know you can do interactive things, and say like if you wanted to have a, a button that you could actually click that would trigger a click handler, you could just import a React component that does that. Um, and for a style guide, this is going to be huge because it means that we can say, you know, for accessibility, your button should work like this, and then literally embed the component that shows how that button works so that people can not only see the code, but see the behavior as well. Um, is it, should, we, should we dive into deeper details here, or do you think we should uh, just kind of show and tell? Let's show and tell. All right, cool. So at this point, what you should be able to do is actually um, stop and restart your server. And if we go into the, the GraphQL Explorer, I think we should be able to pull out some MDX. OK. All right. OK, so if you look at the left there, you've got an all MDX. Um, or I, yeah, I mean, you can write the query by hand, too. I really dig the, the Explorer um, if you want to do that. Oh, wait, but, did, did uh, I click the wrong one? Or is this? No, oh. no you're, you're in the right place. Yeah. Gotcha. And so you can, if you click that, that all MDX button on the left, mm -hmm. and then you can click the file to close it. Like the Look. down below there, that one that's expanded. If you just oh yeah yeah, and that'll that'll get rid of it. And then you can do um, have nodes. It's kind of a shortcut around having to use edges node. And mm -hmm. let's grab the. We could add some front uh, matter in there. 
We could, yeah. Um, actually, grab raw body for now since it's nice and short, and that'll just show us that okay. we're getting the right file. Okay. And oh. uh, delete that section string in your query because you don't need that. Why are um, I think you have to delete it. I think you got to delete the parentheses entirely. Oh gosh. Yay. Okay, so now we have um, NDX pages, right? So those are in the, the data system. We're able to use them. And if you check that body box, it'll show what NDX does to it, which is going to look super wild in here. Whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> what NDX is doing is it's it's basically um, it's actually reading what's called the abstract, syn abstract syntax tree. So um, when compilers like look at Markdown or JavaScript or CSS or whatever, they take the code that we've written and they break it down into tokens, and that allows the machine to do things to it. Um, if you've ever used Babel or things like that, they rely heavily on this to transform content from one format to another. Um, MDX under the hood is basically using a, an AST transformation to take Markdown and React and then turn them into a, uh, like a unified representation so that things run and display the way that we would expect them to. Um, so to actually use this, uh, we need to do a little bit more here. So we're going to, uh, let's create some pages out of this actually. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So the first thing we'll need to do is in your theme, let's mm -hmm. create a template for it. And so as kind of a, a standard thing, I would create like a source folder. Well, you have to create a source folder. So that's kind of a, a guesty thing. Um, inside of that, let's create one called templates. Okay. Oops. And is it not like that? Okay, here it is. And then inside templates, we can create one that we'll call, uh, what, what should we call these? Um, style guide, page. It's kind sure. of or let's call it foundation page because like this is what I would use for like any content that explains like the brand guideline not we're not going to get into the component pages right this second okay uh, I mean if we want we can call it like default and then we can use oh, let's do that. to choose different templates okay cool so we'll, yeah we'll call this one default um, and inside of this we're going to do uh, for now I would say let's just do it like a dump so we can import react and um, as the component, let's just export like a pre-tag that uh, stringifies all the prompts so we can see what's getting passed to it. Okay. Um, I don't know. What do we call this? Just like default? I usually name it to match the file, yeah. Okay. And then just grab all the prompts uh, as your argument. And then, and um, yeah, just do a and then J string EFI props. And then if you pass um, null as the second argument and two is the third, that'll add some, uh, it'll like prettify the output so it's easier to read. Hello. Um, I don't know what the null is for, but the two is the number of spaces you want to put between levels. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, so this. Uh, you'll have to export that default. Yep. That yep. Default. <laughs> cool. Hmm. Yeah, that should be fine, I think. So now we can go back into the Gatsby node and we will be able to um, create pages using that. So let's okay. do another. Or do, do we have create pages up at the top? Nope. Uh, yeah. We should do. <laughs> yep. Awesome. <laughs> So um, in this one, now, instead of stubbing out that first argument to on line five, we yeah. can uh, destructure that to get um, actions. And I think that's all we need right now. Okay. Um, like what we would probably want to do later is add an option for configuring like where the, the content is built. So if you want to put it at like slash style guide, um, but for now, we can just create the pages so that we don't burn all of our time in here. Um, let's do a, uh, we're also gonna import GraphQL on line five uh, alongside actions. It's, it's one of the destructures. Oh. oh, 
is this another destruction? Wait, no, graph. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so now what we can do, um, in order to have the right promises, let's mark a, the create pages function as async. Okay. Um, next to the function, actually, not the Oops. not the exports. Yes, that's perfect. And then we can do, uh, I usually do const result for any GraphQL queries. And this is going to be, uh, we'll await the GraphQL function. Like this? Uh, it's, it's actually called as a function, so we need parentheses. OK. And then inside that, we're going to do a uh, template string so that we can do multi-line. And we can do. Um, a query so you can oh you sorry the keyword yeah. Um, yeah and then we'll do all mdx and inside of here you can do nodes mm -hmm. and let's uh, set some front matter on this so that we yeah hmm, let's see so how do you want this to work do you want the the names of the files to the slugs or do you want to manually set them using a, like a slug front matter um which one's more what's the best practice usually i mean it's this is very kind of up to you if you use the file name what will end up happening is that the folder structure exactly mimics the url structure Let's do that because that, that seems to make the most sense. Okay, cool. Yeah, that totally works. So to do that, what we will do is um, let's see, let's do it. Uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just create a slug. So the way that we're going to create the slug is um, before we finish create pages here, let's uh, create another export for. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm going exports. back. Uh, 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 yep. <laughs> so let's do uh, exports dot on create node. Mm -hmm. And so what this one does is like every time the Gatsby gets new data, um, in this case, we're looking for the NDX file, we can do extra stuff with it. And the reason that we're in here is that we want to use the, um, the NDX node to figure out what its slug is based on where it is. And then from there, we'll be able to um, like create a new field called slug on the MDX nodes that says where, like what the URL should be. So to do that, we're going to um, destructure the argument, the first argument, mm -hmm. and we're gonna get out um, node actions. And I think, is that it? Let's see. Um, that should be all we need, I think. So okay. um, let's then get, um, we're gonna create a, an if statement. So if the node.internal.type, and that's like the, the type is what we use in GraphQL to set like what kind of data something is. And so we're mm -hmm. gonna say if it doesn't equal MDX, uh, and MDX okay. is gonna be capital M, lowercase, Dx. Okay. And um, that's going to be quoted. Mm -hmm. And if if it's not MDX, we're just going to return. We don't want to do anything with uh, with other nodes. So we're only only looking for MDX nodes here. Um, okay. Inside of that, what we can do is uh, we can say we want to get the uh, post path. And so we can build a little helper function for that. Um, and we'll say, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, const to post path. And this is gonna take one argument, which is the node. And inside of it, we're gonna get the, um, like the directory of, of where we are. Um, mm -hmm. And that is going to be from the, the const destructure the directory out of path.parse, the uh, dir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we'll use path.parse and we'll use node.relativePath 
to get that out. So parse is a function. Oh. Yeah. So so what we're saying with this line is we're saying um, using the path plugin from Node, we're saying break apart this relative path for the file and get us the directory so that we know where the, the file lives. Okay. And then we can say um, we're going to return path.join. And this is where we would set the base path if we had one. So like we could grab that out um, if you want from the, the options object. Okay. Um, let's, yeah, so it'll be on line 19 as the second argument after we've destructured. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be, we'll get options like we do for, for the other APIs. Um, we get a theme options as a second argument. Okay. And so then down here, what we can do is um, we can just set a, a const for that base path. Uh, and the, the best practice for this is to call it um, base path camel case. Mm -hmm. And that would be the result of options uh, base path or uh, we can just take it default to root, so it's just a slash. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So here we can do path.join and we'll do base path. Mm -hmm. The second uh, second argument will be the dir. Mm -hmm. And the third one will be node.name. Okay. So that'll give us our post path. And then we just need to actually call that and add it to the um, to the, the node itself. So mm -hmm. underneath this helper that we've created, we can say um, create a constant called slug. And this is gonna be, yeah, you got it. And is it just node? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so now we wanna attach that and we're going to do that uh, using the create node field action, which comes out of, I believe this comes, oh, let me double check that this comes out of the right place. Yeah, this comes out of our action. So um, if we go to the next line down, we can do actions.create node field. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pass in um, an object. Mm -hmm. First argument is the node, or the first property is the node. Second one is going to be the name. We'll call this uh, name. Or sorry, we'll call it slug, actually, like a string. Th this is what we'll actually query for. Like We'll say we want the, the MDX field slug. Um, uh, yeah. Wait, did I do it right? Yep, you did it right. Uh, and we'll we'll run this here in a second so we can see what we're creating. Um, okay. And then the value is going to be the slug. That value is slug like this. Yep. And you can save that. And now, if you stop and restart, we can head back out to the um, the GraphQL. Mm-hmm. And if we look into the um, so collapse file, and mm -hmm. let's get into the all MDX. Yep. Do nodes. And then um, you see the, oh, I did not want. We should have fields in there. Um, refresh that page. Nope. We, Hmm. Did we get an did we get an error in the, the output? No. Hmm. Let's let's console log. Oh, oh, I think I know what happened. Let's um let's comment out that whole create pages section because it's not it's like an invalid query right now. Oh yeah. 
So let's, yeah, comment that all together. Let's run this one more time, and it should add that, uh, add that field for us. So just so you know, there was a comment that path.join needs to be replaced with a new utility function to change the slash. I always, I always mix up backslash and forward slash um, for Windows users. Oh, I thought that was the whole point of path.join is it a bid. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I, I was actually under the impression that that was the whole point. We'll have so, to look into that. Oh, crap, where's... Where's our fields? Hmm. Well, we didn't need to like, return anything, did we? Yeah, that should definitely be added. Maybe we should like console log to make sure it's getting hit. Um, maybe you can just like, yeah, maybe log that slug to make sure that it looks the way we want it to as well. Yeah. It looks like um, Leonard just chimed in that uh, Ward on the core team has put up a PR to handle the slashes. Cool. So that'll be neat. Um, um, did it I don't for it. Us? No, it did not. Okay. We did something wrong. So let's look at the code and figure out where our, where our bug is. So we did export stop on create node. We're checking for... Um, you know what this is? I think this is because the, the cache is, is already running here. So let's go into our demo, mm -hmm. uh, package JSON. Yep. And we're going to add another script called clean. Yep. Yeah. And we'll call it, well, the actual thing it calls is Gatsby clean. Um, and so now let's run that real quick. What that's going to do is it's going to delete the cache. Um, and cause I think what's happening right now is because we already have a local cache, it's not trying to create that MDX node again. It's seeing like, oh, that file hasn't changed. So I don't need to do any extra work and therefore it just skips it all together. Um, right. so what this will do is it'll delete the dot cache folder, the public folder, and it just kind of tells Gatsby to do everything from scratch. So mm -hmm. this time, fingers crossed. We should see. Ooh. Okay, well, things are breaking, so at least we're getting closer here. Path must um, be a string. Received undefined. To post path. Ooh. Gatsby node 29. Gatsby node 29. Oh, it's this. It's this. Okay. Let's, uh, let's log the node. Or let's, I guess, let's console log node.relative path. And see what's in there. Just to make it clear. Well, now it's not giving us anything. Nothing at all. Oh, we, we got to run the clean again. Uh, it, yeah, it yeah. Created the nodes. Undefined. Weird. Okay, so why didn't that like that? Let's uh, do we need to get the whole node? Is that no, we shouldn't have to. Um, okay, yeah, so Jason, let's Jason can, we, can we add clean to the develop uh, method or the develop script? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, we, can, we can absolutely do that. So uh, you could just, yeah, just like double, double ampersand tag it on there. Wait, does that work? I think you would just have to do like Gatsby clean and Gatsby develop. Oh, sh. Oh, maybe, yeah. Because I think it, 
Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd have to do like the the yarn run clean or something like that, and then it would. Yeah. yeah this, this will be easier. Um. It says someone in the chat said console node directly. I mean, it's worth a shot, right? Let's. Yeah. That's that's what actually I was going to recommend next because I think that's the. Uh, This is all the stuff I'm terrible at, so I'm glad you're helping me. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, object, object. Uh, yeah, you're, that's really helpful. At least there's something in there. Um, so remove the wrapper around it. So just log the node without the template string. Because I think that's okay. the two string method screwing with us. Okay. Uh, and there's a question in the chat about uh, things changing to grab MDX. Um, there's absolutely nothing changed. The, the thing that's cool about GraphQL is that the relationships kind of go in multiple directions. So in another stream, I use all file and then I use child MDX to get the MDX stuff out. Um, that's completely doable. There's no, like, no problem with that at all. Um, if you want to do the other way, you can do child MDX and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. However, I think that might be what's going wrong because we're doing MDX and the MDX is coming back with the internal, but it doesn't have, doesn't look like it has the relative path or anything. So maybe what we need to do instead is attach this to the file node. Well, we have file absolute path, mm -hmm. but it, there's nothing in it. Yeah, let's, uh, oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah, okay, so let's let's refactor this a little bit. What we'll do instead is we'll um, we'll check for the existence of a file node instead of an MDX node up at the top. Okay. Uh, file, like this? Uh, capital F, but yeah. Okay. Okay, so now, um, what we should be able so go ahead and just run that again. Let's see if it works. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Cool. 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 So this did what we wanted. So what it did is um, now it created the it like had the the folders because what what we were doing is we were actually trying to pull in a relative path on an MDX node. And I don't think that MDX nodes have a relative path. So it was just coming up undefined and causing a bunch of haywire. Um, mm -hmm. So now it actually does have a relative path. So it created a relative path for us. And if we go into all file instead of MDX, Oops. we can do nodes and fields and floods. And if you run, you'll have to delete that section. There we go. So now we have a slug. Um, and if you want to try setting a, a, a content path in the, the demo options to make sure that that shows up the way we want, we can do that as well. So that would be in the Gatsby config for the demo. Mm -hmm. And we uh, can set, uh, yeah. Uh, how about my cool stuff? Yeah. And then if you just stop and restart, what we should see is that that slug just like prepends my cool stuff. Oh, did not like that. Didn't like that at all. Path pass does not exist on your file system. So something in our, uh, did we? Wait, why, is it, why is it trying to read that one? Hold on, we did something wrong. Um, I don't know. Where, go go down one more. Did we? Oh, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is my fault. It's not content path. It is. Uh, Relative path? No, no. Base, is base path, base path. Okay. Wait, this here? Yeah, and so we'll set the base path for uh, line 53. We'll swap out all the content paths to base path as well. Oh, gotcha, shoot. Okay, the, the great thing about these restarts is that they're cheap. Um, and then we're gonna wanna change that in the Gatsby config as well. Oh, 
No. Nah. <laughs> okay. Um, so now, if we stop and restart, that should do what we want it to do. Keyword should, but it's looking pretty should. good. Okay. All right. Uh, and then it, uh, your console log there, I think, would show us what happened, but we can also just rerun this query. Mm -hmm. Yay. Ah. Look okay. at so that. You now have a, so now, like, what's cool about this is that this means your theme is completely configurable, where, like, the theme itself is kind of sandboxed into whatever the, the, the base path is that you set. Um, and we probably, I imagine, like, we won't have time to get into theme UI or anything today, but mm -hmm. um, if you set up theme UI as the way that you power styles on this, you'll also be able to, like, tap into the theme, um, like, whatever site installs this, if they use theme UI. It can they can control all of the the colors and fonts and and that good stuff through a um, like a system UI spec. There's a like a theme spec for design tokens. Mm -hmm. um, I just did a live stream last week on this with uh, Jackson, and I will post a link to that in the chat as soon mm -hmm. as I'm able to look it up. So let's. Uh, so let, just to recap in my own words, so yes, if yeah. I'm someone who wants to use this theme, I can inside of my, what is it, my Gatsby config uh, for my project, I can set the base path to whatever whatever folder path I have my documentation in for these, these pages, right? Otherwise, it'll default to, what did we say, docs? Yeah, it'll default to docs, and it'll okay. default to, like, the URL will be the root, so slash. If I want to use a custom folder, I don't know, path to my documents, pass it in as the base path. Otherwise, it'll default. So, well, there's so there's a there's a distinction to make here. So base path is for the URL. Um, so base oh, gotcha. path would be like I want this to live at, at slash docs or slash style guide content path is what would control what folder it looks for controls the folder gotcha um so the, so, the, yeah, we that, set the base path to just slash if you leave it blank it'll default to slash and the the content path defaults to docs okay cool yeah so um with here, I would uh, we can probably drop the the option for a base path for now. Mm -hmm. um, and so let's create some pages. So we can go back yep. into that Gatsby node. Uh, or yep. maybe maybe for now, what we should do is let's uh, let's build our query to grab out the the data. I think we already did it in graphical, but let's um, oh, yeah. let's look at the browser. Yeah. So we've got the all file nodes fields. Slug. Um, so you can copy that. Yep. And let's go into that on create or on uh, create pages that we commented out. Mm -hmm. So we can uncomment that now. And let's replace the query with the one that you just copied. Okay. And then um, first, we're going to do a little bit of error handling. So we'll check if result.errors. And if we get here, this means that something's wrong with the query. So we want to output that. Um, let's use a built-in Gatsby reporter so that we can put out an actual error message. So in the uh, the arguments to the, the function up above, you can import next to GraphQL uh, as part of the destructure, something called reporter. Recorder? And the reporter, uh, reporter, reporter, like a journalist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so in here, we can do reporter.panic. And the panic it will cause Gatsby to like stop building, put out an error, and tell you what's wrong. So the first thing we'll send is a message, and we'll say like error loading uh, MDX file, or error loading style guide MDX files. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing would be result.errors. So we actually want to put out the, the error that came back. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Um, yeah. They, that, yeah, it's like the second argument. Okay, so if we get past there, then we can we have data. 
And so we can, um, uh, we're not actually going to return anything because uh, okay. we, we don't need to, but we can do um, result.data dot all file and we're just going to dig into this uh this draft ql query so all file dot nodes and then we'll do a for each loop mm -hmm. and the argument is going to be the node and inside of here we can do actions dot create page um and the uh it's going to take an, ob an object mm -hmm. first argument is the path and the path will take the that slug, so we need to get that out. Um, in the node, that'll be node.fields.slug. Okay. Because it just matches the, the GraphQL uh, shape is how we can tell. Um, mm -hmm. The second one is going to be the component. And the component, and we're going to use require.resolve. Require and this is a node built in, like so we don't have to import that or anything. Uh, and then the path is going to be relative. So in the string, do dot source or dot flash source, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then we want to get to the templates and that default that we set. Um, later, you would be able to do detection using the like the front matter of the, the NVX or something to decide mm -hmm. if you want to set a different template. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know that you need to do this, but I always include the .js in required okay. result. I, I haven't tested that. Let's uh, probably, a, probably an experiment for another time. Um, and so what this should do is this should give us a, uh, a page created at that. Let's also pass in as context the slug. Um, so as the third argument or the third property for um, after line 26. After 20, oh, sorry, slug. Or it's actually called context. Oh. And then it'll take an object and the object that we'll pass in will be this one. Like that? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so um, upon doing this, what should happen is we should get a, a page created at slash accessibility that will have a pre-tag containing, um, among other things, a page context prop that has this slug in it. So let's, let's uh, stop and restart and Fingers and toes crossed, this is all going to work on the first try. And this should create it in the demo folder or wait, where is this creating um, that? Well, it's actually not creating anything. It's going to read, uh, it's going to read that accessibility.mdx and then yep. it's creating a page. So when we go to localhost 8000, we should be able to get um, by default this. Like this? Yep. Uh huh. Yay. Hey. Hey, okay. something went right. <laughs> <laughs> On the first try even. Yay. Um, okay. So I think the, the, the last thing that we probably want to do here is, um, let's see. So what, what's the rest of our checklist? We want to get MDX actually displaying so that you can install mm -hmm. React or you can import React components. So maybe let's do that next. That'll, uh, sure. that'll look really nice. So we can go to, let me just double check that I got all the things that I need. Um, we're going to create the pages, and then those pages that we create are going to be built out of a template. And in our template, we're going to uh, run a query. So let's let's go into our uh, template, that default template. Mm -hmm. And let's import uh, GraphQL as a named import from Gatsby. And then um, above the, uh, the default component, we can export a new constant called query. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter what we call this, but um, it, we have to export it. That's kind of a major thing. Um, and yeah, you've already got this figured out. So a GraphQL, when it's imported from Gatsby, is a, a template literal, and that will um, signal to Gatsby that we need to like extract and run this query. So in here, uh, we can, if we want to open up the GraphQL Explorer, we can get the data that we need, and then we'll figure out how to 
mm-hmm. uh, how to pull that out. So let's do, um, let's use file. And we're going to want to do a, uh, use the fields there, that checkbox mm-hmm. as a filter and slug and equals the, the EQ at the top there. Um, yep. And for now, just type in flash accessibility. And uh, down below, let's grab out the child in DX. Mm, yeah. Okay, and let's just grab out the raw body, make sure that we're getting what we want. Look at that. Okay. okay. So now what we need to figure out is what we're going to actually show on the page. So at the moment, all we really have is the body. So let's uh, uncheck raw body and check body, and we can start um, displaying these pages. Oh, okay. Okay. And that then, um, so we're going to do something here that I like to call the, it's like a data layer cake. Um, and the reason that this is useful is that when you get into themes, people can shadow individual files. So that means that like, if I want to take your, um, like your style guide component and I want to add a persistent footer or a sidebar or something like that, I can, take that component and rewrite it and still like be using the theme. Um, to avoid people having to rewrite the query every time, what we end up doing is we'll declare the, the query here and then we'll just pass that result directly through to a component that will pre- that'll present it. Um, so that way we'll have uh, kind of a separation of like the data is sourced here and passed into this component. And then this other component just gets that data as props so that if you go to shadow, that data is present. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So that query that we just wrote, we can paste it in here. Cool. And um, we've hard coded the the slug there. So yeah. let's fix that. Um, because we passed in slug as context, we have access to slug as a GraphQL variable. So on line five, if you do uh, add the query keyword, Uh and then in parentheses, uh, slug starting with a dollar sign, and then that's going to be a string. Mm -hmm. So capital capital S string. Capital S. No quotes. Oh, like this? Uh Uh-huh. And then instead of parentheses, I think you want to finish that with an exclamation point. And so oh, it's telling the data says, type and it's saying it's mandatory. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. we're saying that slug is a variable that we'll get. It's going to be a string and it's like fail if we don't have it. Um, mm-hmm. And now on line six, you can use it. With quotes or no? Nope. Yep. So you, you're okay. doing it perfect. Perfect. So now what happens is instead of that page context, we're going to get a prop called data. So if you want to stop and restart, we can see that, or you can, um, or we can like jump to the, the next step. Um, instead of page context, we're gonna get data. What do you mean by yeah, that? Let's, let's let's dump it and let's show it. Okay. Am I going to localhost? Yeah, you'll go to localhost to that accessibility page that was created. There we are. Yeah. And so now what we can see, if you scroll down a little bit, the that data prop is there. Yeah. And underneath it, we've got the file, the child MDX, and the body. And this is what we'll actually use to display MDX. Um, so that's giving us what we wanted. That's awesome. Let's create a component to actually display this data. OK. And for that, Let's take um, a source and then create a component folder. Oh, in the root folder, sorry. And Wait, create yeah, that was right a source there. folder in the? Yeah, in the theme. Okay. 
And then inside that, um, we can call this whatever we want. I think probably page is good for now. Okay. Um, then we can Yeah, you got this. Uh, and then we'll just choose the prompt that we want to get. And so, like, if you were going to have your front matter, maybe you would want, like, a page title and description and stuff like that. For now, we've only got I the body, so you could just. That was... Oh, that all happened very fast. I think you froze up for a second, and it was like you uh, oh. <laughs> were magic. <laughs> um, but so the, the prompt that we'll get, for now, let's say it's just going to be the body. Okay. Do we render it just and like this? Um, well, no, we have to use an MDX renderer. And so that's going to come out of Gatsby plugin MDX. So um, below the React import, we want to import MDX renderer as a named import. And it's capital MDX. Okay. Like full capital? Yeah, all full caps, yeah. Kind of an yeah. odd name, but um, yeah. And that's going to be from Gatsby plugin MDX. Mm -hmm. um, and for that, you just wrap the body with that. Oh, okay. So like it's a component. Um, Wait, uh, it's, it's actually like as a, it, it's just a React component. Oh, so, shoot. Yeah, um, okay. And then like this or? Yep. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. So now, um, in your template, I'm just the default template. OK, sorry. Yeah. In the template. Um, yeah, in the default template, now just import that component you just created. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we call it? Page from page. OK. And then uh, instead of, and then this page, takes in props or takes in body, and then you can either de. Uh, I yeah, I wouldn't. Let's uh, let's destructure a little bit. So you can get um, the data. You have to wrap that with parentheses as well. Okay. Um, and then if you want to, like, you can go as deep as you want into that data destructuring, or you can do it in the, the prop itself. Like, this is where, so there, there's an argument to be made here for kind of, like, building an abstraction of the data um, before you pass it in. And so that's, like, one way that I've done it is to just declare an object that has all the, the data that's at the top level, and then you can spread that directly into the, the page so that all the props are like their own thing, um, that scales pretty well if you want to do that. So yeah. instead of directly returning the page, let's um, let's turn it into an actual function. Okay. Oh. Uh, so like with yeah, and then um, let's set up a page object. So like const page, and the first one is going to be the body, and that would be data dot file dot child mdx dot body. I think let's check the GraphQL to make sure. Yeah. Um, data Hold file on. child mdx body. Body, data, data file mdx body. Yep, yep, you got it. Okay. So, um, that I mean, and, and if you ha when you pull in your front matter, instead of having to go like front matter dot title or front matter dot category or whatever, you would just be able to say the title equals data dot file dot child index dot front matter dot title. And if you change this later, like you start pulling in from a different data source, you would only have to edit this object because the rest of the app assumes that this uh, this object is flat and it just has like a title body, whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah, except your audio cut out for like a solid 10 seconds, so I kind of lost everything that you said. <laughs> 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 okay. Title, body. Um, 
Yeah. So, I mean, basically what we're doing is we're just creating an abstraction. So the, this yeah. goes from being a very uh, tightly coupled MDX data type to being a generic, like a page object with properties for the different data that you're going to use. Yeah. Um, and the reason that's valuable is that if in the future you change your data source or like the MDX file gets shuffled around and you go from title to headline or something, you only right, have to right. update it in this one adapter as opposed yeah. to updating a bunch of different places. Um, yeah. But so like here, you don't actually have a title, so we, we won't use that now. But like if you set up front matter, it would be child MDX dot front matter dot title, um, gotcha. which, uh, yeah, you'd be able to do that. For now, this is a pretty like a pretty simple object, um, but we can just return now the page component, mm -hmm. and we can spread the page object onto it. So without the, oh, the body. Oh equals. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I think you still have to wrap it in curly braces though. Does this? Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And that should work. We should be seeing uh, actual markdown on the page now. Oh, no. Oh, we missed the thing. What did we miss? MDX renderer. Oh, God, oh, no. Oh, boy. Pa oh, wait, what is this? Query was run and page not found. Maybe I let me re should I maybe restart? You know what, that's probably right because um, we changed the query without restarting. And so sometimes when you change the GraphQL queries, the cache gets out of sync under the hood. And so this is a, we should get an, let's see, we should get an error if something is wrong. It looks like everything's okay. So let's refresh that page. No. No, bye. Okay, um, what do we do wrong? We've got our page. Uh, you forgot to destructure body in page.js. No. Structure body and page. page. Okay, let's look at page.js. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then you got to quote that um, or wrap that in parentheses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My goodness. Okay. Yay, it looks so pretty. Hey. Okay, <laughs> so um, this is now functioning. Let's pull some, some React into it to show how it works. Um, so we can just create another component of any any variety. Uh, I usually bail out the buttons on this. You usually what? Default the button? Yeah, I'll just I'll like create a button with a quick handler so that we can show something working. Okay, sounds good. Mm-hmm. Nah. Let's just return you button. Oh, I guess I should add the actual function. Hold on. Um, I don't know. Do something. Uh, you, can, you, can just, you can just console log if you want. Oh, let's do that. Okay. And it'll still need to be a function. Oh, shoot. Yep. Um, and then we need uh, like some button text. <laughs> that would be useful, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of UI. I don't know. I don't know if fun is, is the right word, but uh, you know. <laughs> um, cool. Okay, so this is uh, this puts us in pretty good shape, I think. So yeah. in our accessibility .mdx, yep, yep. what we can do now, and this is going to make it fun. So up at the top, we're going to import button from. Gatsby theme, it's actually not going to be relative. It's going to be from the package. So from Gatsby theme style guide, slash source components button. And you could alias this and like uh, create an index.js that, that exported the button so that you could do named imports. Um, mm -hmm. But for now, like this should just work. 
if you, yeah, self closing, hit old button. Let's see if that works. Let's alert instead of log it. That's a great idea. Great idea. <laughs> well, let me see if this even works. Because if it doesn't, then, you know. <laughs> Look how much fun this is. <laughs> so much fun. Yeah. No, so this is, I mean, this is the power of, of MDX though, is like, instead of having to figure out how to like put some content in and then like import part of an MDX file and then uh, stick that into a component above some interactive content and then get another MDX file to put below it, you just get to write them all in place. Um, and this is like, when you get into newsletter forms or like what you're talking about for this style guide, wanting to be able to embed a component to show how it works, that's, this is really, really powerful stuff. Um, oh yeah, good. Yeah, you'll want to destructure that out though. The in online three. What was that? Online three of the button. It's a, a prop, so you want to destructure it out. Oh gosh. And then it needs uh, parentheses around it as well. Uh, you know, live coding. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! All right, cool. There you go. So it's basically fully functional React, right? Yeah. Um, and so to do this where you could, uh, could show the components, like in your style guide itself, you could set up a component in the demo and, um, and import that as well. So like you, you've kind of got free reign to do whatever you want now that you're, you're set up. Do um, you want to try that real quick to verify that works? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, we're, we're, we're like going way over time here. Do you, is it bedtime for you? I'm in bed by eight. So we're already late, Jason. It's fine. <laughs> I had a coffee. Okay. I am ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So, um, okay. So what we can do then is let's, let's get a, an MDX component coming in from the demo site. After that, if there's anything else that you want to look at, we can look at that. But I think that'll put us at a pretty decent stopping point. Yep. Okay. So while we do this, if anybody watching wants to ask questions, now is the time to put them into the chat so that we have time to answer them before we wrap. Mm -hmm. um, they better be good, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's staying up past her bedtime for this, so I am. let's just make it worth a while. Um, <laughs> so in our demo folder, you can create a uh, the components like really wherever you want. So you can um, create like a source component folder or whatever your preferred structure is. Yeah, let's just do that. Holy heck, go away. Components. Okay. Um, hmm. I saw that I was taking your Gatsby course on Frontend Masters earlier and you did a wave component. Let's do that. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so this one is also fun because we'll get to do some, some React hooks. Hooks, um, yay! So yeah, create that wave. Yeah. And at some point we shall return a button and we'll say, we'll give it some text and we'll say, hey, I'm waving and we'll give it the, so basically what this component will do, it'll be a button, you click it, it'll tell you how many times that you've waved at someone, right? So right. what do we need? We need to have, we need to keep track of these things somehow. So let's create a hook. So we'll call it waves and it'll do, what is it? Set waves mm -hmm. and it'll be used. Um, we need to import use state. Mm -hmm. And that's also going to be an array. Oh shoot, yeah. Okay, so now we've got that set up. It's initialized to zero, and we want to display that. So let's go ahead and make this, um, I don't know. Wait, how do we want to do this? So like maybe say you, 
cube waved, I don't know, and then wave times. Uh, yep, but you'd want total. Oh, yep. Okay. We won't worry and about we that ternary. <laughs> we'll, we'll make it an click handler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On click. And we're going to uh, set waves to waves plus one. And yep. then export. How's that look? I, that looks right to me. Let's give it a shot. All righty. Um, so now we should just be able to import that straight from your docs. Uh, okay. That accessibility page. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is not coming from there. Okay. Wave from uh, components wave. Or it was components, or so it's going to be up and then source components wave. And I think uh, wave is lowercase. I don't know if that would matter on Mac, but we've been yeah, by that. It's better safe than sorry. Yeah. Wave. So theoretically, I think that should work. Theoretically. Failed to compile. Wave is not defined. Wave JS. Wave. Oh, we did, did uh, singular wave again on line eight. Ah. Uh, shoot. <laughs> you just really wanted it to be like one wave. I. <laughs> I'm not gonna make a joke about how I have no friends. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, that can be like uh, the next the next refactor of this is like after you get more than one wave, it's like, that's too many waves. Look at all the times I can wave. <laughs> this is the best website I've ever made. <laughs> I, it's, I mean, it's a thing of beauty. Um, it is. But I mean, this is like, this is what I think is so exciting about this, because effectively, if you, if you go back and look at your demo, um, the site that's using this, it only has like the components that you're using and this folder for your content, the, the rest of it right. is just kind of build artifacts. So we've yeah. installed the Gatsby theme, we've set up the, the content, um, that my cool stuff folder got created when we, when we set the, uh, the base path mm -hmm. or the content path. So that one yeah. can actually be deleted if we want. Um, yeah. And so this, like all of this is kind of abstracted away in the theme itself, but we can control where the content is loaded from, we can control what route it generates on the website, um, and all of that gets done through the uh, like through the theme, so that people who are using the theme don't have to think about it. Um, before Anna, do you, do you have any questions before we like anything you want to dig into before we wrap? I don't think so. I think this was so much fun. Um, once we got the sound working, um, no, this is yeah. really useful. <laughs> I'm I, so uh, sorry about that. The, the setup of these kind of things always confuses me. I'm not very good at those kinds of processes. So this was very enlightening. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, and it was super fun to, to kind of go through this process. Because, um, you know, I've been doing this a bunch, like getting ready for the themes launch. I've, I've set up a bunch of these. So it was really, really helpful for me to see where people have questions, where they get stuck. Um, and it was also really cool to see that, like, we didn't get stuck that much. Um, which is, right. like, I find that very encouraging. <laughs> um, right, and yeah, I got it, I got to code hooks live, which I haven't used hooks much in my day job. So that was your tutorial. If you guys haven't seen his friend and master's tutorial, go watch it because it's just blowing my mind. So, oh, thank you very much. I, I did post a link to that in the chat if you if you want to take a look. Um, and outside of that, uh, Emma, where should people go to find you? Do you want to pull up some some websites in your browser? Uh, sure. Um, so the last time I was on here, uh, Jason helped me um, 
add images to my my portfolio, which is really fun. They load super fast. So um, if you want, you can go check out my portfolio. It's on GitHub as well if you want to go fork it and play around with it. Um, but really, uh, I think Twitter is probably the best place you can find me because um, that's <laughs> Where I spend all my time. Um, so yeah, if, if you want to reach out, <laughs> Twitter is the best way to do it. Um, and I really appreciate your time. This was super fun, super useful, and um, I'm excited to use this. Yeah, I, I had an absolute blast. Um, and for y'all who are watching along, please hit that follow button on Twitch. We're going to be doing pretty much nonstop Teams content all July. Uh, I've got Christmas party coming on later this week. We're going to do more stuff next week. Um, it's it's going to be a really good time. I'd love to have you back on the stream. So um, again, hit that follow button and check out the upcoming events. I'll be updating those uh, shortly because I we just had a whole bunch like over the weekend. So um, yeah, please uh, please follow us. You know, go follow Emma. She's amazing. Got a lot of good content. Um, oh, do you want to talk about the Ladybug podcast for a minute? Oh, yeah. So um, for any of you that don't know, myself, Ali Spittle, Kelly Vaughn, and Lindsay Kovacs have started a, uh, a tech podcast. So it's run by women. It's for everyone. We talk about life and tech. Um, we've got two episodes up thus far. Um, you can go check out our website. Um, you can stream it on all of your fun streaming apps um but we would love to have you we'd love to have you join in on the conversation about you know side projects tech career all that fun stuff awesome all right well emma thank you so much everybody thank you for tuning in to watch and i think that's the end of another episode of learn with jason we will see you next time thanks <laughs>